always been part of the sweet science. Today, one of boxing's most intriguing rivalries is between the fans of Mexico and Puerto Rico. Mexico has produced an astounding 69 champions, while the small commonwealth of Puerto Rico has an equally amazing total of 30 champions. Of course, you have to understand that the Puerto Ricans and the Mexicans are the two Hispanic communities that have produced the most champions in the history of boxing from Latin America, that is. The rivalry has thrived because of the machismo inherent in both cultures and because they both produce fighters in the lighter weight division. Plus, the contrasting styles of Mexican and Puerto Rican boxers often produce fascinating fights. It just seems that for some reason when the Puerto Ricans fight the Mexicans or the Mexicans versus Puerto Ricans, they always get up for the fight and they make for memorable fights. It just has been a long, long war. Well, that so-called war continues this evening. Nationalistic fervor and pride will no doubt be in evidence here tonight at uh, Madison Square Garden. Lopez and Sanchez goes beyond uh, two men trying to unify a title as the boxing rivalry between Mexico and Puerto Rico rages on. We turn back to uh, uh, the fight, Dr. Ferdy Pacheco. Uh, what are the fundamental differences in style between uh, fighters from Mexico and Puerto Rico? Ferdy? Well, I think we go first to something they have in common big time and that is inhuman courage. I mean, these two countries produce fighters who have to fight every minute of every round. I'm, I'm speaking now in generalities. I think the audiences make the difference. The Mexican audience won't take anything less than an all-out assault from the first round on. They want to see action from the first round. A Puerto Rican audience is more willing to watch the guy develop and fight beautiful fights. That's not saying there aren't m many great Mexican fighters obviously who are exceptions to that rule because of it's Salvador Sanchez, Monson, great fighters. But but the Mexican fighter is straight ahead from the time he's a kid. In the gym, wherever you go, straight ahead action. Never quit, never stop. Let me ask you, will Lopez become number one in the hearts of Mexican fans if he wins here tonight? That's a wonderful question. I think he's over the hill, overdue, overdue for, for that popularity. Yes, I think he's starting to go on as the, the tide goes out for Chavez. This guy comes in and he's well due. He's, what, 20 fights in championship. All of us in, in boxing can see he's the best boxer going with one exception or two. For me, he's the best. For us, he's the best. Yes, I think it's due. He, it, it should be coming to him if he looks good tonight. All right, well, Alex Sanchez didn't particularly distinguish himself all that much in his last fight against a fighter named Victor Burgos. Bobby, is he in the same class, the same league as Lopez? You know, personally, from my money, no one is in the same league at 105 pounds as Ricardo Lopez. He's in a league of his own by himself, and he has no peer. At the same time, that's not to take away from Sanchez, who's an excellent boxer puncher. And if he rises to the occasion and Lopez is less than perfect, we could have ourselves a beautiful little war. Lopez is so disciplined, surgical-like, relentless, fundamentally sound. Let's go inside the ropes. Take us into the, the style of Ricardo Lopez. Absolutely, Steve. Ricardo Lopez always has his hands up. He's always ready to fight, ready to punch. He's always well-balanced. And I'll tell you what, when he gets his stuff together, it's a dangerous time. All right, so uh, we'll see what happens between Ricardo Lopez and Alex Sanchez as we get more on the style of uh, the great fighter from Mexico. Here you see him, hands up, always ready to punch. He slips against Villamar, left uppercut on the butt. All 105 pounds is behind it. She's legs spring with down and up and in. And then defensively, as we'll see him in the next clip with Andy DeFantis, he throws a nice one-two, sticks a nice right hand over the top, and he's ready to block and watch the counter over his head, slips it, steps off. He's hard to hit twice, never once, never mind twice with clean punches. Hands always up, body always in the right position offensively and defensively. The epitome of the sweet sign. And Bobby Chez, the man who will be inside the ropes with Ricardo Lopez, the WBO champion Alex Nene Sanchez, and he will have the crowd's support from uh, Puerto Rico. He's made six successful defenses of his title, holding the belt since 1993, but only one title defense in the last two years.
Most recently, uh, Sanchez with an unimpressive unanimous decision over number one contender Victor Burgos in March, as we mentioned, bounced back from his first career loss, a decision to a fighter named Edgar Cardenas. Fortunately for Sanchez, a non-title affair. Let me ask you something, Bertie. Sanchez makes his entrance here. Does, does this kid have the heart, the guts, and the guns to match up effectively with Ricardo Lopez? What do you think? Personally, I don't think he does because I don't know who does. I don't. I, I really don't know who does. He has as good a chance as any. He has all the capacity that a champion needs. But this, you're talking about a guy that's almost a perfect fighter. He may have an off night, but we'll see tonight. The, the chances for me are slim almost none that he could he could upset him but on the other hand you know every night every fighter has his night if ricardo fights as he does with the determination and and the focus that he does there are very few fighters that have a chance against him. many feel that sanchez is the best opponent out there for lopez at 105 and we'll take you to the wbc champion waiting in the wings undefeated Ricardo Lopez is the flag of Mexico. Boxing's longest reigning champ. 19 consecutive successful title defenses through almost seven years. Consecutive successful title defenses, 25 by the legendary Joe Lewis. And with the win, Lopez will pass four fighters, including Larry Holmes. He'll tie former featherweight champ Abe Attell with 20. One of the true gentlemen of the game carries himself with such a class and dignity. Bobby, there are those who feel that to really solidify his greatness, he needs to move up to improve his level of competition, fight the top junior flyweights or flyweights. Remember, too, he's 30 years old. What do you think? You know, if he hasn't moved up yet, it's a possibility that he's just, that's where he is. He's a 105 pounder, the best I've ever seen. And certainly the universe of fighters at 105, Steve, is small, so maybe he has to go grow up, excuse me, go up and grow in weight a little bit to show people just how great he is, but he's great regardless. All right, let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. Although Lopez, who turned 30 last month, is six years older, he has the height and reach advantages over Sanchez. The man called Nene, as in a little child, is only 5'1". Lopez is over four inches taller with a four-inch edge in reach. And they're going with a WBC-WBO combination for this title unification fight. We'll check the uh, main uh, items here. No standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop it. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the final round. If an accidental foul occurs before the uh, bell to start, the fourth round of the fight is a technical draw. If it happens after the start of the fourth, they go to the uh, scorecard. So here at Madison Square Garden, we are getting ready for the WBC WBO 105 pound unification bout between Ricardo Lopez and Alex Sanchez. Let's get the pre-fight amenities from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, before we present our action in this bout, at this time, we'd like to ask you to rise for the respective anthems of both of the boxers in the ring. We begin with the Puerto Rican anthem, La Borinquena, and to lead us at this time, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome world-renowned salsa vocalist, Andy Montagnier. La tierra de Borinque, donde he nacido yo, es un jardín florido 
de mágico primor, un cielo siempre nítido le sirve de dosel y dan arrullos plácidos las olas a sus pies cuando a sus playas llegó Colón. El clamo lleno de admiración. Oh, esta es la linda tierra que busco yo. Es por Inquen la hija. La hija del mar y el sol, 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 nuestra Please remain standing, ladies and gentlemen, for at this time we play the national anthem of Mexico. Well, fans, it's champion versus champion in this next bout of unification world championship featured attraction brought to you by Don King Productions and King Vision in association with Showtime Event Television, Madison Square Garden, and St. Ives Family of Brands. This bout coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, President Jose Suleiman, Supervisor Mario Latraverse, and the World Boxing Organization, President and Supervisor for this bout, Francisco Valcarcel, along with the New York State Athletic Commission. The chairman is Floyd Patterson. Introducing to you our judges scoring this bout from ringside, Melvina Lathan, William Lurch, and Chuck Williams. Introducing to you our referee in charge of this bout, working in this, his ninth world title bout, Arthur Mercanti. All right, fans, here we go with the unification of the WBC and WBO 105-pound championship scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing. Introducing to you first on my right, the WBO world champion in the blue corner, wearing white trunks with green trim, hailing from and representing Ponce, Puerto Rico. He weighed in at 105 pounds even, with an outstanding record of 25 wins, only one defeat. He has 18 wins coming by way of knockout tonight. He is making the seventh title defense. Here is the WBO mini flyweight champion of the world, Alex El Nene Sanchez. his opponent across the ring the WBC world champion on my left riding out of the red corner wearing white trunks with green and red trim hailing from Mexico City Tacubaya Distrito Federal Mexico 
He weighed in the same as his opponent, 105 pounds even. Tonight, he is making the unprecedented 20th defense of his title with a record of 45 wins, no losses, 34 big wins coming by way of knockout. Please welcome boxing's longest reigning world champion, the undefeated WBC strawweight champion of the world, introducing Ricardo Finito Lopez. And once again, a referee, Arthur Mercanti, now to give instructions. Good evening, gentlemen. We went over the rules by both organizations earlier. I expect you to obey these rules. Let's have a nice, clean fight. Puck scrub. Good luck to the both of you. Arthur Bracanti Jr., uh, that one of the uh, great names in boxing. He and his dad, uh, referees. Ricardo Lopez in world title bouts, 20-0 with 16 KOs, eight of his last nine wins by knockout. Alex Sanchez, a stable mate of tonight's headliner, Felix Pinedad in the white with the green trim. And guess what? Lopez in the white with the green trim. But it says Nene on the front of Sanchez. Well, you can tell the difference between the two fighters is the one with the jab is Lopez. That says Ricardo on the front of uh, Lopez always has his hands up. I think you made a, a strong point of that. So disciplined. You know, he really is. Hands are always up. Feet are always ready to move, bend, shift. His reflexes are excellent. He just threw a nice straight right hand down the middle. And Nene Sanchez is going to have to get in the middle. He's going to have to come to the power of Ricardo Lopez. And that has to be a nightmare. Right now, he hasn't figured out how to block the jab real good. He's getting it in. Ricardo's getting it in with his usual efficiency. And that usually means bad news because something's coming right behind it. Lopez, who epitomizes the term sweet science. True craftsman. Tremendous combination puncher. Does have one punch power, although he doesn't fashion himself in that vein. Excellent defensive fighter. Beautiful stance. Brilliant ring technician. Systematic, consistent, surgical-like. Meanwhile, uh, Alex Sanchez, tough, straight-ahead fighter. Not bad fundamentally, pretty good jab, an action fighter. His best weapon is the left hook. Right now, he's uh, making a profession out of eating leather because he's not throwing much, and Ricardo's doing just about anything he wants to. He's Sanchez, is, yeah, he's the shorter of a fighter. He's got he's less in height, less in reach. He has to get on the inside, inside and neutralize Ricardo Lopez's leverage because here's a guy who's perfect at everything inside and out. Certainly from the outside, Sanchez has no chance. Lopez, a master of the uppercut, is about four inches taller than Sanchez. And he has a reach advantage of four inches. Well, one of the, oh, one of the things... Pounding shots off the head by Lopez. As we're amazed by his variety of, of assault weapons, you got to look at his defense. Stop a minute and watch when the other guy throws a punch. This guy, I mean, he knows how not to be there. I mean, he is so beautiful in, in defense. He's so elusive. We've uh, likened it to a basketball a situation where he just does it at both ends. You know, when we joke with him about being one of the best, if not the best pound for pound, he's, oh, no, Roy Jones, De La Hoya, Felix Trinidad, he doesn't give himself any credit. Well, he's he, so modest, isn't he? he? He knows he's good, but he doesn't think he is the, the best. And I think that's so refreshing in this age of blowhards. Nice right hook there by uh, Ricardo Lopez getting the crowd going. Final seconds of the opening round scheduled for 12 for the unification WBC WBO 105 pound title. That's a mouthful. A nice right hand by Sanchez is best punch it around. And good defense here by Sanchez ducking under those shots by Lopez. Wow, what a boxing point. He's saying, when he throws the right hand, his hands are very high. He's leaving, he's leaving his liver and his midsection exposed. When he comes in with that right hand, his hands are up. Go right to the liver. Go right with your hardest shot to the liver. And of course, he does what his corner tells him pretty well. He said, stand in front of him at all times. Don't run away from this guy. Come on. 
Well, that's what the fans want to see. Look at the hands up again by Ricardo Lopez. <laughs> that, guy, that guy must sleep with his hands up. He gets up from the chair with his hands up, even if he's got 20 seconds to go before the bell. Gosh, that guy has trained, trained himself to be a, a fine defensive fighter. Well, round one was fought mostly at a respectful distance. We'll see what happens here in, in round number two. Lopez, when asked yesterday what does unification mean to him, he said, it's just another fight. When asked if winning all the belts would be special, he said no. When asked what would be a special win for him, he said, they're all special. This guy has a future in politics. Yeah, and yeah but I, I don't believe he's sitting on the fence. I believe he's actually earnest, so maybe politics would not be good for him. Well, he's very modest. Oh, good point. He's very modest, very humble. As you mentioned, he thinks Jones, De La Hoya, and Trinidad are better than him. I would say better or as good. Oh, oh. there he goes. Straight right hand, and down goes Sanchez. Alex Sanchez down for the Five, first time in his career. Six, seven, eight. He'll get up at eight. He took the eight count on his knee. He doesn't seem to be really hurt, but that right hand was sweet. And he looks to finish it here in the second round. 55 seconds and a long way to go for Sanchez in round two. Look at how he puts that uppercut in there. Combination by Lopez for the head of Sanchez. Surgical life. Everything, though, beautiful. Uppercut down the middle, right hand over the top, followed by a jab. There again, he uppercut a little sloppier that time. But he, he does so much so well, and he can get away with almost anything. It's scary. Continues to get through the gloves. I wish he weighed the same as Prince Nazim Ahmed. Oh. The Prince is 126. Featherweight champion, and Lopez 105. The thing is good about him, he doesn't go crazy. He had the guy down, he just goes right back to boxing. He knows it'll come. He, has he does exactly patience. what got him there. Such patience. What we talked about in some of the inside the ropes, his balance is always perfect. His hands are always in the right position. His body's ready to move, his feet well under him. He does everything so well. It was a straight right hand that put Sanchez down for the first time ever. Look at this exchange. Toe to toe. Wild swing and a miss with a left hook by Sanchez. He's eating a lot of punches, though, Sanchez. Sanchez landed a couple of good shots, but the effects are almost none. Another left. My Lopez, straight left hand. He powered both hands. And he knows how to finish. Sanchez landed a nice right hand here. Wrestling tactics by Sanchez. Lopez's counter not too effective, and they got a little tied up. I think it's more frustration on that for it. Get great defense by Ricardo Lopez. Big round for the champion. Ricardo Lopez, the WBC champion. Right, we're going to have the luxury of three looks at this knockdown and keep your eye on the right hand. Uh, there you go. It's just a, a picture perfect. He was turning him and landed a right hand flush. Bobby, take a look at it from the other angle. Yeah, we got a little more of a close up of it. You'll see Lopez again, his hand is always in position, throws a nice right hand, and there he is right back. Right back, keeps his hands up, timing's perfect. But Nene a little off balance. You, you know, shot. Bobby, the thing is, he keeps his eyes open all the time. I mean, he's like, he knows where everything is. The shot was open, he landed it right there. I mean, the, the man is a, a perfect player. Half of Lopez's 34 knockouts are in three rounds or less as we enter round three. Lopez asserting himself, knocking the other champ down at the 55 second mark of round two. A stumble off balance Sanchez. There were some bad intentions on that left hook. Indeed. Did not uh, land squarely. Fortunately for Sanchez, the WBO mini flyweight champion. See, Sanchez cannot stay outside at this range and beat Lopez. He can't do it. He, Lopez, look at how he punches. Look at the leverage he gets from the outside. Sanchez has to smother those punches, walk to him, hands up. Fire on the inside and rip him up. So Sanchez upper. has never been in there with anybody like this. Those uppercuts. I mean, it don't seem like they're going to do any damage. You keep seeing them knock out people with those uppercuts. Nice combination by both men. Oh, oh. 
Lopez 45 and 0, 20 and 0 in world title bouts, his 20th title defense. Staggering numbers. Undefeated as well as an amateur in 40 fights, 85 and 0 all told. You know, right now Sanchez too is about the best there is at this weight for Ricardo Lopez to face, and it's not even a question as to who's the better fighter right now. The other uh, champions are uh, far from household names. It's even hard to pronounce their names. Rosendo Alvarez of Nicaragua, but here's the tough one. Ratan Salvora Finn from Thailand. He is the IBF champ. Alvarez the WBO. Well, I got to give him any credit. At least he's been hurt in both rounds, and he still is standing in front of him, still bringing the fight. Well, he came to fight for it. He was no question in my mind that he would. He, he came to fight. He's here to win this fight. Can he do it? That's another question. Pretty good counter there. Straight left by Sanchez. At back, Lopez up momentarily. Oh, oh, oh. Look out. No holding down. Sanchez being uh, now, cautioned, being warned uh, by, about pulling Lopez down. Lopez answers back with a left uppercut to the midsection. Well, that one started from way back there. That was a long uppercut. Seemed like you could count on that. South of the border by the Mexican. Under 30 seconds in round three. Lopez just takes his time when he wants, boxes when he wants. The guy caught with a nice left hook right hand. Then another right hand. Alex Sanchez having his best time now. He says, come on back, come on in. Urging Lopez in. Pack it off! Final seconds of round three. Big finish by Sanchez. Let's get it over to Jim Gray with Jose Torres. Jim. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. The former light heavyweight champion of the world back in the 1960s. Right now, you're watching Sanchez. He's from your hometown in Puerto Rico. You've been screaming some instructions. You're kind of nervous for him, aren't you? I'm very nervous because I get involved with these little kids from my hometown who are trying to do their best. And this includes the rivalry between the Mexican and the Puerto Rican. Now you're a little bit fearful, however, in this instance that the Lopez is a little bit of, better of a fighter. Uh, Lopez is such a great fighter with such a great record that scares anyone. And I'm one of those who are very nervous because I know the talent of this uh, Mexican fighter. Do you remember your fight here back in 67? It ended in a riot. I remember, uh, the thing that I remember the, the most is that the announcer always used to to finish his uh, his uh, broadcasting by saying I uh, this is Don Donkey from the from Madison Square Garden now he says this is Don Donkey from under the ring by Madison Square Garden <laughs> let's hope Steve Albert isn't under the ring Steve thanks very much uh, Jim uh, I echo those thoughts uh, Don Dunphy uh, uh, one of my idols uh, in fact uh, his son Bob is our director in the control truck as we speak here's the online scoring a Lopez uh, leading two rounds to one well, I'll tell you they gave him assuming they automatically gave the third round to Sanchez he had a couple of good combinations I don't feel it's enough to win the round I, I don't either I've, I've got him uh, winning all three rounds oh look at these double up with the left by Ricardo Lopez another whipping left hook combination oh. to the head straight through and Sanchez shakes it off. He shrugs it off, but that usually means he's hurt. That was so beautiful. He throws a double left hook, steps back, hesitates, slips a punch, a third left hook, then a left hook right hand. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, what is that? Come on, man. How about uh, Arthur Mercanti uh, almost uh, echoing exactly what you just said? Yeah, I mean, it's like that's disgusting. He's a two champion. You don't need that. Well, Sanchez uh, showed his championship medal in round three. We're into round four, halfway through. But then Lopez coming right back. Again. Oh, he hit him when he was on his way down. He's, he's taking a point away from Sanchez. One point now. Three between. One point deduction. Dirty tactics. One point. One point. One point. And that goes for the crowd, too. One point for them. Between now. He's giving everybody a point. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Anybody who looks sideways at Mercanti's a tough family. Arthur Mercanti, senior. One, wonderful, uh, man. Oh, wonderful man. Wonderful man. Former broadcast partner of mine and a referee in so many 
great championship. Neither fight. senior or junior will take anything in there. They're the boss. Indeed. The illustrious Arthur McCanty Sr. And Junior doing a great job as well. Under a minute. Round four. Oh, oh, low, low blow. Oh, that wasn't low, what do you think? You Oh, left hook by Ricardo Lopez as he answers back. Ricardo Lopez now going to the uppercut all over the place. A barrage, lefts and rights. And, oh, Sanchez goes down. He tries to pull Lopez down with him. It's not a knockdown. Well, no knockdown, but it was. You could see It he, was a knockdown. He was, it was. Look at him. Look, and at, this guy, look at Sanchez resting on one knee, and McCanny's going, what are you doing? He was still hurt, fellas. Yeah. I think that was clear evidence. He was trying to take an eight count. It wasn't clear really a knockdown, head. but it, it, it was. It was a knockdown. Final ten seconds. Uh, Sanchez uh, just looking to survive here now. Uh, Lopez uh, kind of letting him off the hook. And that, oh, a pummeling right uppercut to the body. Hunt at the bell. Sanchez makes it through as he stumbles to his corner. Nene's in trouble. That, that, I don't understand why the referee didn't give him a, a, an eight count. He went you down on him. his knee. He's uh, like, let's take a look at the fouls. It, it was evident. Look, look, look. Not only does he push him down by the head, but then he hits him while he's down. That's, that is a foul. Yeah, that's not going to work. That, that's not, not Here's where he gets hurt. Yeah. He's got him teed up pretty good. He hits him with a nice right hand here. And the hook on the temple, you see him stagger back. Now what happens here is Lopez starts to clean up on him. And as he leans into Lopez, Lopez is hitting him. You'll see him kind of lean into Lopez and almost just fall into him and down. Now nah, that's where he's going down. He was falling and he just grabbed on and hold, you know, just holding on to whatever he could. And it's round number five. You should have never fouled Lopez and got him aggravated. Sanchez down uh, for the first time in his career earlier in the fight. And for all intents and purpose, uh, went down in that last round, but not officially ruled a knockdown, but he was in trouble. I think if the referee sees a guy on one knee taking a, a knee down, automatically it's an eight count. He's taking, a, he's taking an eight count. And then he just uh, staggered to his corner. Arthur McCann said, what are you doing? He wasn't even sure. Oh, oh, what a left hook by Ricardo Lopez. And oh, oh. Sanchez with a low blow. Yes, come on. That was a little bit low. No question about that one. Here's that left uppercut followed by a left hook by Lopez doubling up with the left. The punches that Ricardo is landing now, the punch is just too big. There's another big one, an overhand right to the head of Sanchez. He is taking a pummel, this kid. Sanchez is taking a pummel. How about the sounds coming up? The gloves. There, right there. You know, he's at oh, yeah, the beginning of the end here. Look at his face. He's holding Wait. on right now. He doesn't want to go down again. Wait. So he clings to the waist of Ricardo Lopez. It may have saved him from a knockdown. I'll tell you what, right now, this is almost academic. I think the kid's in trouble big time. This fight is almost over. Oh, wait. It looks like a matter of time. Ricardo Lopez is no nonsense. This is not just boxing. This is making a statement. Left cut off the combination, and down goes Sanchez again for the second time of the fight. Four, five, six. And he staggers Listen, around. He's in eight. tremendous, tremendous I don't trouble. Know. That's, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. it. That's it's it. That's over. It. They've stopped it. That's it. After the second knockdown, really the third, it is all over. And Ricardo Lopez has unified the WBC and WBO 105-pound championships. And I hope this country gives him the credit that he deserves. He should be a national hero. I don't know what they're waiting with that knockout. I don't know what they're waiting for. They're not going to find a representative for the country cleaner, better, more modest, and a better boxer than this guy. I don't think I've ever seen anybody come out of Mexico this good. A vicious attack. He just took Sanchez apart piece by piece, round by round. And there is uh, Alex Sanchez, who uh, is uh, dethroned, no longer the WBO mini flyweight champion. This was his seventh title defense. He was 7-0 in world title bouts. And now, 
It all belongs to Ricardo Lopez. Now, let's take a look at the beginning of the end for Sanchez. By this time, he was really softened up. The, the, uh, that right hand right there could have put him away. Almost anything could put him away. And look, look at how he holds off, like, for dear life. Now, when you see that kind of stuff, I don't know what the referee you know, can, can do, but separate him and let him go back at it again. And, of course, what was waiting for him was the end. The punches were just too hard for it. He was landing clean with everything he threw. Nene couldn't get out of the way. There was no more defense this time. It was a matter of trying to survive. And you've got a guy in front of you. The way he's built is almost like 105-pound Bob Foster. Tall, rangy, beautiful power, thin and deceiving. And this guy is just a monster. And he finishes beautifully. Boxing's longest championship reign rages on. Ricardo Lopez unifying the WBC and WBO 105-pound titles. His 20th consecutive successful defense of the WBC strawweight title, which ties him with former featherweight champ Ava Tell for the most consecutive successful title defenses. Let's go over to Jimmy Lennon Jr. right now for the official time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a time of 1 minute 58 seconds of round number 5. Our referee in charge, Arthur Mercanti, stops the contest. He's the winner by way of technical knockout. He is the new unified WBC and WBO 105-pound champion and still undefeated, Ricardo Lopez. Here he is, John. Lopez uh, remains undefeated, 46-0, 35 knockouts, staggering 21-0 in world title bouts. Meanwhile, Alex Sanchez now 25 and 2, his first loss in a world title fight. And uh, Lopez becomes only the third unified champion of the world today, joining Nassim Hamed and Johnny Tapia. The question now will Lopez look to clean up the rest of the strawweight or mini flyweight division or move up to junior flyweight, which is 108 pounds, or perhaps flyweight, which is 112. So coming up next, it's our main event, the WBC Super Waterweight Elimination bout into the dressing room of Puerto Rican hero Felix Trinidad, who ventures into foreign territory tonight against number one contender Troy Waters. Trinidad uh, to fight at 154 for the first time. 11 title defenses of his IBF welterweight crown, which is not on the line tonight. He's undefeated, 31-0, 27 knockouts. That's his story. Felix Trinidad, always uh, loose, always confident. Numero uno, he says, right now, set for post-fight reaction. Let's go to Jim Gray in the ring. Jim? All right, thank you very much, Steve. I'm now joined by Ricardo Lopez. Once again, Abel Sanchez will translate for us. Ricardo, your, your thoughts on your performance here tonight. Le doy gracias a Dios porque cumplí 20 defensas y qué bueno que estoy con Don Kim porque él nos abre el camino a todos los que queremos ser grandes en el boxeo. Thank God for my 20th defense and I'm sure glad that I am with Don King. He knows how to guide a fighter to greatness. Let me ask you, do you now feel as though you have taken over the mantle as the greatest fighter in Mexico or is that still Mr. Chavez? ¿Usted cree que ya usted es el mejor boxeador en México después de esta pelea? No, el mejor sigue siendo Julio César Chavez. No, the best remains Julio César Chávez. Tell us now, if you'll look at the monitor, Ricardo, and tell us about the knockdown in the second round. Platícale del knockdown en el segundo round. Sí. Estaba yo boxeando, le metí una derecha al mentón y se fue a la lona. He slipped the hook that uh, Nene threw and hit him with the right hand. It was a clean shot and he went down. And now let's jump ahead to round five as the match ends here. It's about ends. Bueno, van a adelantar el quinto. Okay. He's having a word right now. The two fighters are conversing here. Go ahead and tell us what Nene, he said. Nene said to him, I admire you a lot. Boxing is boxing. I was crazy to be your friend, but I couldn't be your friend before the fight. But after the fight, I want to be your friend. You're a great champion. I congratulate you. That's You're what the best. Thank you. A, a, a heartfelt statement right there, wasn't it? Yes. yes. I came very well prepared, and you beat the heck out of me, so you're a great champion. What is next for you, and do you feel as though now you are pound for pound the best fighter in the world? No, hay mejores peleadores que yo. Lo que viene ahora. If he's not, who's better? He said, no, no, I'm not the best in the world. There's a lot better fighters than I am. And what's next? My like box. Who? Como quien? Como. <laughs> <laughs> Como <laughs> can't think of anyone, huh? Just Chavez, huh? 
What's next? Let's bring in Don King real quick. Don, what's next for Ricardo? Well, he's going to fight on October the 25th in the Plaza de Mexico, uh, probably against Alvarez, the WBA champ. And will that be on the uh, Chavez-Gonzalez card? It'll be on Chavez and Gonzalez. All right, we'll have more from Don in a bit. Congratulations to you, Ricardo. Very nice. Let's send it back now to Steve. All right, thank you very much, uh, Jim. Let's take a look at the online scoring results from our uh, our last bout. And there it is. Lopez four, Sanchez one through uh, through the five rounds before it was stopped. If you took part in the uh, voting, we thank you for your participation. The online voting will continue with the start of our next bout. Felix Trinidad versus uh, Troy Waters. And right now we're set to go back uh, inside the ropes with some analysis of that fight from uh, from Bobby Chet. Bobby? Sanchez does, excuse me, does some things on the inside trying to work hard, but look at, look at, I mean, just look at the way Lopez finishes. He throws punches, they're hard, they're deceivingly hard. He's a thin, frail guy, only weighs 105 pounds, but he's ripping shots up on the inside, left and right. He works, works the uppercuts. We got a quick view there, the tail end. All right, Bobby. Uh, as we go outside inside the ropes uh, once again coming up next our main event the WBC super welterweight elimination bout a crowd of better than 14,000 on hand here we are just told at Madison Square Garden the Mecca of boxing 